Good morning. Thank you for joining me today for this short presentation, which is how to use video and live streaming to promote your school or college. My name is James. I'm director of HD Media. We are a video production training and hire company in Silbridgeworth in Hertfordshire, um, operating sort of predominantly within the South East, East of England, but also UK wide and also internationally. Um, what I wanted to share with you today is just some of the advice um, and some of the um, experiences that we've had working with schools, certainly over the last three or four months, um, particularly producing content on the back of COVID and not being able to host an open day or open evening in the normal way. So um, just wanted to sort of run through what we what we can do, what the options are, um, and really so you you know that there is an alternative to to having an open day. And, and um, I'm sure many of you will have heard the term virtual open day bounded around. Um, this can take many different forms. So I just want to sort of run through um, what, what that looks like, really. Uh, so, yeah, good morning. Um, as you can see today, this is uh, an example of what you could do as a sort of broadcast. So we're using Zoom today. I've got a virtual background, so if you look here, ta-da, basically I've got a green screen behind me um, and I've used the virtual background um, setting on Zoom and I've created my own custom background, which is this lovely classroom. The more observant of you will notice that I'm actually at the back of the classroom facing the wrong way, so I wouldn't be teaching a class. Um, but this is a good example of what you could have. So obviously we've got the H&E Media branding and sort of a side of slightly blurry photo to give the impression of depth of field. Um, but you could do something similar for your, uh, your school or your college if you, if you wanted to. So again, just to give you an idea of what you could do. So what are we going to be covering today? So I'm just going to do a brief introduction um, to the issue. Then we're going to look at the different options that you have in terms of virtual open day content. So pre-recorded content, um, that's to say content that you make in advance. Live streaming, obviously, where you do actually go live. And then the kind of halfway house, which is um, live streaming pre-recorded content. So this takes out some of the worry of going live, remembering your lines, technical issues, etc., cetera, um, by sort of creating a program and running out content that you've already made in advance. And again, what I'm going to run through with you today is a mixture of content I've already created that I'm running through a PowerPoint presentation, but also cutting live to the camera like, like I'm doing now. So um, you, you get that kind of balance between the two. And then the fourth option is mixing live and pre-recorded pre content. So, you know, that's, that's what's happening here as we go through. So COVID-19 means we cannot have an open day, but what do you do? Don't do this. Don't be the ostrich. Um, you need to do something. And I'm going to help you today by explaining some of the options um, that you have available to you. So let's consider what's the purpose of the open day. Really, it's to showcase the school in the best way possible, convey the school values, culture and ethos. It's so parents can interact with what the school has to offer. And you really need to stand out from your competitor schools in what is really a competitive environment. So obviously, owing to COVID at the moment, we can't do this face to face, but we can do something that's almost as good and in many ways actually better and has a lot more longevity in terms of investing in the content uh, now you can use it for the open day or the open evening, but also in perpetuity um, in the future via any number of different sort of means. So um, it, it's, in many ways, you're reaching a new audience and, and that could be quite powerful for you as a school or a college. So how exactly do you convey your school culture, your values and your ethos when you can't invite parents along uh, and, and young people into the school? What, what do you do? Many schools are exploring the possibility of hosting a virtual open day. You've probably heard this phrase um, sort of mentioned uh, in, in your school and other schools. Many people are, are turning to sort of what are called, you know, virtual events. Um, virtual wouldn't really be the term I'd personally 
use i'd say online so if you're going to brand it i'd call it an online open day virtual is getting into like virtual reality and that's not really what this is so i, I personally feel like the word virtual is misused um with regard to kind of virtual events per se but that's obviously just my personal opinion how do you bring your school to life uh, in this virtual in quote in quotation marks uh, format Again, video is a really, really powerful way to do that. And I'm going to show you some examples of uh, what that can look like as we, as we run through this. And what are the best options to showcase in the school? So again, I'm going to run through um, different ways that you can promote the school, different things you might want to consider doing yourselves or commissioning a company to do on your behalf. And then one of the questions people often ask is how long should the event last if it's online? Typically your school open day, open morning, open evening, uh, maybe many hours in length, but this is predominantly designed to fit uh, a number of different sort of time slots, if you will, of people coming into the school. Uh, and more often than not, it's just purely owing to uh, the high level of demands that your school or college probably has for open days again doing it online there isn't really a limit on capacity so everyone can be there at once you can therefore do a shorter event maybe half an hour 45 minutes uh, running time and capture everyone in one place and again that's a great time saver for everyone anecdotally many people have said to us um, it's been easier creating an online open day uh, in terms of the video production and also more cost effective um, one school marketing uh, person compared the cost of printing the brochures that they normally give out to the cost of our video and said they were basically the same. Um, so again, you know, it needn't cost more than, than you, you might fear. Um, we're also going to look at sort of equipment. What, what would you need? What considerations would you need to make if you want to try and do it in-house? And then do we have time to do it? You know, lead times are often tight. People are sort of getting worried about getting something created in time for the open day. We've had so many people come to us over the last few months. Not one single person has been let down. Everyone has had high level um, quality production created within the time scale, even if they've left it really quite late. So I would say to you, if you're watching this, all is not lost. Um, you do still have time. And can you afford to promote the school? You know, what's it going to cost? Well, I'd counter that by saying, can you afford not to promote the school you know the end result of of simply just doing nothing um could be that parents and students who are a good fit for your school may end up picking another school you won't get the maximum reach because parents don't know your content exists you invest a lot of time in filming and editing purchasing equipment and you may not get the result you were hoping for and it will therefore inevitably affect the performance of the school if you're not getting the parents and students signing up that you might typically for an open day so what is the solution? There are so many options. We're going to start with pre-recorded content. Um, again, different ways you can do this. You can do it yourself. You could hire a company in. For the DIY route, consider hiring some professional equipment. Think carefully about the locations for the interviews. You know, don't do what people do at weddings and push everyone up against the wall for a picture. Um, that never looks good. You want depth between the subject and the background so you can get a really nice shallow depth of field, really professional looking um, interview. So think carefully, don't choose the smallest rooms in the school um, just because they're available. You know, try and push for spaces that are gonna really sell your school as a backdrop. Um, bear in mind though that the interviews will only be on screen often for a few seconds at a time and will then be covered up with cutaways. So um, obviously if you, if you can't get exactly what you want it isn't the end of the world but again do do consider those locations carefully um, think about planning your your filming appointments of 30 minutes per interviewee generally gives you time to relax each interviewee and also to get the best result so factoring in adequate time um, and a realistic schedule for whether you hire a company like ours to do it or you try and do it yourself in-house is is really important lighting makes a massive difference so today I've got two LED ring lights that are lighting me. Um, and again, having good, good lighting will help your camera to focus and give you a much better um, professional finished result. And again, if you're using a green screen like I am today, lighting the green screen effectively 
um, minimizes any noise on the image and gives you a cleaner image so you get a better result all in all. And if you are going to do it yourself, invest in a really good microphone, ideally a lapel like I'm wearing today. So what are your options in terms of pre-recorded content? I'm gonna focus on four today, promotional videos, uh, talks. So these would mimic the uh, individual talks that you'd have on your open day, your open evening. Um, presentations with voiceover, these are popular because you don't always um, want to lose the slideshow deck, but it's a great way of having a picture in picture format where you can slow, slow, it's a great way of having a picture in picture format where you can show the presentation uh, with a voiceover. And then also star student and parent testimonials, which can be within the promotional video or created as standalone uh, pieces of content. So really your promotional video is your showpiece for the school and you want it to show the values, the ethos and the culture. And really in place of an open day, it needs to sell the school. And this is your strongest asset that you are going to invest in. Um, the promotional video, because this not only will be shown on open day, open evening, open morning, um, this will go on your website, this can be on your homepage, this can be sent out as part of a sort of online prospectus, it can go on YouTube, Vimeo, social media. The reach of this video um, can be huge and, and will be seen by people far beyond those that would ever have actually made the effort to come to your school. So again, really invest in time, um, consideration, um, in, into your promotional video because this, of all the content you're going to create, this is the showpiece. So I'm just going to run you an example in full. It's about six minutes long uh, just to give you an idea of what that could look like. Welcome to Thomas Elaine Academy. My name is Mark Lewis and I've been head teacher of Thomas Elaine since 2012. I'm really proud of our school and I'm delighted to lead a school in Stevenage. I currently live in the Old Town and my parents lived in Broadwater so I have a strong connection to our community and I value the important role our school can play as part of the town. I love working at Thomas Elaine's. There is a strong community spirit and extremely positive relationships between staff and students. Our five core values run through everything we do. Our students are awarded postcards and badges for achievements in each core value. Aim high, create and succeed, show respect, be safe and take pride. Um, my name is Gloria and I'm in year seven. When we first came in, it was just year seven, so the teachers were all around the school making sure everyone was getting to the right place at the right time and no one was being lost. The clubs at school, like I'm currently in the netball team and the football team and they've been really good so far as we've won most of our matches we've done so far. Uh, my name's Monique Hunnigan matthew and I am the head of Year 7. Um, so I am one of the first members of staff that students meet when they join the school um, and I am their head of year so that means that I meet them in Year 6 and I'm with them all the way until the end of Year 7. So throughout Year 7, I support them with their learning and their behaviour and I am the consistent person that they can come to um, if they have any issues in, in their first year with settling in or with other students or their peers. My name's Christine Harvey and I'm Head of English here at Thomas Elaine's and I'm also a member of the Senior Leadership Team. There's lots of things that's special about Thomas Elaine's. For me, I think it's a sense of community. As soon as I joined the school, I realised that at the heart of the school is the, the core values and the ethos, and you just feel there's this inclusivity about the place.
I'm Mrs Bailey, I'm one of the assistant head teachers. So careers, information, advice and guidance is an integral part of the curriculum here at Thomas and Lane. As options for students become more complex and more varied, it's really important that they have the knowledge and skills to be able to make informed decisions about their futures. Through a rigorous application and interview process, 20 students were selected to take part in the Airbus Flying Challenge. As part of the challenge, they work alongside Airbus mentors on a 20-week project. As part of this, they've also had the opportunity to work with inspirational role models such as Chris Akabusi and Dr Susie Imba from Leicester University. Hello, I'm Sarah and I'm in Year 9. The Inspirational Men and Women's event was a speed networking event where we went round and learnt about various different jobs and we could ask questions and it gave an insight into what type of job I'd want, whether it would be working from home or working with a larger group of people. My favourite careers event is the Airbus Flying Challenge as I had to go through the whole process of applying, interviewing and so when I finally got it, I was, it was like an achievement. It's also very useful as I want a career in STEM, so I've learnt skills that will help me with that. Um, my name is Mohammed and I'm in Year 7. Um, my favourite subject that Thomas Allen is, is maths because I believe it can deal with life threatening situations such as taxes, money, clothes, etc. I enjoyed going to Kazania, which was like a mini city for um, careers, like any careers that you wanted to do in the future. So it just like helped you choose if you enjoyed your job, you could do it in the future. My name's Geoffrey Bagshaw, I work in the science department and I predominantly teach biology. Making a difference with the students is about building positive relationships, so working with them not just as student teacher, so you know, valuing them as people, trying to give them the skills that they have to have for moving forward in the world. Oh, working at the school is amazing, uh, the kids are brilliant, they're really positive about everything you try and do for them, they get engaged with most things that you try and offer to them. In the classroom, it's good to have a really positive relationship with them in terms of not just the science curriculum, you know, treating them like young adults and having a laugh with them around the school and talking to them about the day. I'm Grace, I'm a senior student in, uh, in part of our sixth form and I study sociology, history and combined English. I moved here at the beginning of year nine and I knew nobody and I think it was in my second PE session, Miss, one of the PE teachers, it was rugby and she saw, how, she saw how good I was and she asked me to be a part of the girls rugby team and that whole, pro, that whole situation gave me so much confidence in the rest, the rest of the term and it really is just a like a continuous pattern of support that I've got from the teachers here. The head student and the senior student team, we help run loads of events throughout the school year. Everything from open evenings and the Macmillan Coffee Morning in September to helping marshal the fun run we have in the summer term. I think it, the sixth form as a collective also gives the younger students something to look up, look, look up to and gives them something to aspire to and help them give them something to work towards in a way. I hope you find this video and our website useful. Please do contact us if you require any further information and we hope to welcome many of you into our wonderful school community. So, um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Obviously, it gives you a good idea of what a promotional video could look like. Um, you've got the interviews, you've got the cutaway shots. Um, there you've got some of the aerial footage that was captured by a drone. But really, it sort of, it sells the story of the school and the ethos and the values of the school and really explains what makes the school um, special. So, I, I think it's really, really important to... Um, to get all of those messages across and a, a promo video is the way to to do that um, 
You may also want to augment that with um, some other content. So you may want to look at a teacher address. So essentially, um, if you imagine this replacing your, um, your speeches that you normally do on open day or open evening with uh, a video. So again, you could script it, you can put it on the teleprompt so they can deliver it to the camera. They can talk to the camera like I'm doing there um, or they can look off camera sort of like I'm doing now. Um, it's a great way to, to sort of get across everything that you want to say um, in a really effective way and you can keep it quite short and quite concise as well. So I'm just going to run you a quick example of a teacher address. I won't run all of it because it's fairly long, just to give you a flavour. Um, this one has some cutaway shots in it just to give it some more visual interest. Hello, my name is Will Connolly and I'm the Director of Boarding here at Hockrell. The core aim of boarding at Hockrell is to promote the positive physical and mental health and ensure the safety and well-being of the boarders in our care. The pastoral support offered to the boarders plays a key role in supporting them, alongside the enriching and considered curriculum that is delivered to our students during the academic day. Each boarder is overseen by a head of house and has a boarding house tutor who meets with them frequently and writes two boarding reports per academic year. Students build a strong rapport with their house tutor and this member of staff would usually be their first port of call should they need any support or guidance. The college are lucky enough to have a fully functioning health centre on site, which is staffed by qualified nurses and overseen by our Head of Student Health and Wellbeing. The college works closely with a local doctor's surgery and can organise for students to be seen by a local GP on site, along with other health professionals if necessary. Staff receive frequent training and are well versed in assisting teenagers in an ever-changing world. Students are treated as individuals and staff are adept at building trusting relationships with the students and our understanding of the increasing pressures of young people in today's world. So, um, as you could see, that was an example of uh, someone sort of talking to the camera and, and really in video form replacing what you might do at your open event for the school. Um, in quite a short and concise way, obviously with some cutaway shots. So there's lots of things you can do. You can replicate or even enhance the, um, what you'd normally do for your open events through video and uh, actually make it more engaging and uh, in many ways sell the, the school or college in a, in a better way. So uh, the third format that I wanted to show you is the presentation slides um, format. So this is a picture in picture format you've got the presenter who has been videoed giving the talk and then you've got the slide deck that we've added in afterwards so the crucial thing is here we don't need to film uh, the slide deck um, at the time to go in we just need a reference point for that leave that up to us uh, we have a second camera for that um, and then we just drop the slides in afterwards and then in the edit we marry up um, what happened uh, during the talk in terms of the slides progressing with uh, our copy of the slide deck and then you get a really nice uh, presentation that can include the branding. So I'm just going to show you um, maybe a minute of a presentation with slides picture in picture just to give you an idea of what that looks like. Um, a very special Today is the college's 152nd um, birthday. So it's 152 years old today. And Mrs. Scarrett, if you haven't met Mrs. Scarrett, she is our amazing librarian who's worked at the college for a long time. And she's also responsible for archiving all the things to do with the history of the college. Um, and she's going to talk to you today about today, which is called Founders Day, mm -hmm. and we'll just hand over to her. Mm -hmm. 
Good morning, everybody. Um, it's very nice to see all of you in on mass. I haven't really been introduced to more than a few of you for short story club and things like that. So um, it's it's very nice to meet the whole lot of you together. I, I met you in one trench of girls and one trench of boys. But um, as as uh, as Gus uh, just said, it's Founders' Day today. The school was founded 152 years ago because. In those days, if you belonged to the Church of England, life was dandy. And you could organise yourself and do this, that and the other. But should you be so shockingly aberrant as to want to do something like be Roman Catholic or a Protestant so, of the United States? There you go, that United was an example uh, of a picture-in-picture -picture, uh, slideshow presentation with the actual talk uh, recorded and again you may want to do something similar as part of your open day you don't actually have to see the person um, you can just have uh, slides like I'm doing now and you just hear the voice um, or you can do a combination of the two where you have that picture in picture set up and again that's something that we would do for you in the edit um, so countdown timer this is a really good idea um, we'd recommend this if you're going to go live and you're going to do either a live stream of pre-recorded content or a live stream uh, of live content or a combination of the two because it counts down to when the program begins. So if your program begins at nine, set this running at 10 to nine. Um, so when people log on, they know roughly how long they've got to wait and they're more likely to keep it running in the background while they make a cup of tea or feed the dog or whatever it is that they're um, looking to do. Again, in terms of algorithm, if you're going out on social media, Facebook um, or YouTube or any platform, again, getting this running ahead of the program started will mean it reaches more people. Um, and what I'd recommend is if, if you are using Facebook um, or another social media platform, get people involved, commenting, sharing. The more interaction you get within the first couple of minutes um, of the video going live, the more people Facebook or the social media platform will push it to. So again, little tricks like this, having a countdown timer. Um, one, it's great viewer experience of the person involved, gives them an, you know, an idea of when it's going to start, but also it um, helps the algorithm on social media and pushes it to more people. So it can be really effective. So I'll just run you 20 seconds of this just to get an idea of what this looks like. So as you can see, this is just a countdown timer. You can put information at the bottom, branding, um, sort of anything you want really that, that sort of um, fits with the school identity. Um, and I'd, I'd highly recommend doing this. I think it's a really nice, really nice touch. So um, something that we often ask is how can you deliver a promotional video quickly and make it high quality? Um, this is the salesy bit. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to apologise, I, I have to get some salesy bits in there somewhere. Um, but this is the sales bit, so sorry about that. Um, but how do we do it? Well, it's a team effort, it's not just me. Um, there's a whole team of people involved in making a school promo. Typically, uh, the ones we've been producing over the last three or four months have been at, involving at least four people, sometimes more, um, across the different areas. Um, so you'll have someone sort of overseeing it who, who acts as the producer, uh, someone conducting the interviews, someone doing the post-production, someone doing cutaway shots. And for most of the schools, if not all the schools we've filmed with recently, they've all wanted aerial footage. So we work with a CAA licensed, um, fully insured uh, aerial drone operator called Paul. He's absolutely fantastic. He does all of the necessary uh, checks ahead of time, um, gets all the paperwork done and, and makes sure everything is all above board. Uh, and legal, which is great because we have had the police visit um, before just to check because they've been notified that there's been a drone in the airspace and everything's been above board and they've gone away very, very quickly because they were happy. Um, so obviously, if you are getting aerial stuff done, make sure the person has all the relevant um, sort of certifications and they really do know what they're doing. If it seems too good to be true in terms of price, they probably aren't doing it legally uh, and they may not have insurance. So I would say uh, with that particularly, you do get what you pay for, but, but we work with Paul um, and his company and he's absolutely fantastic 
Um, and again, everyone that we've worked with has wanted that aerial view of their school. Um, we work to a schedule, so I'm happy to share this with you if you're watching this um, and you're thinking, oh, actually, I could benefit from a schedule. That's something we can give you. We have it as a Word file. Um, it's basically a plan for the day that we know works. We've used it time and time again. Um, it factors in setup time, uh, time for us to move from one location to another for the interviews, which does take time. You can't book us an interview at half nine that finishes at 10 and then have another one in a different place at 10 or five past 10. We need more time than that because we've got a lot of lights, uh, we've got cameras, microphones. It's quite a bit of setup. And we, we normally have two people uh, on interviews just because of that, because of the setup time that it takes. Um, and again, having that schedule that we work to allows you to plan the day uh, for us collectively, you know, us as a company and you as a school, um, and to really get the most out of that day. Because if you're getting us in for the day, you want to minimize the disruption, but get the most value that you can in terms of content. So um, we've got to plan a plan, a schedule here that, that works really, really well. We twin, tr twin track it, put my teeth in. We twin, twin track it. Um, so we'll have one or two people doing the interviews, chaperoned by a member of staff, and then someone doing the cutaway shots, chaperoned by a member of staff. And they'll work independently of each other as effectively two units moving around your school. Um, obviously, it's always best practice to chaperone us, and that's what all the schools uh, do. Obviously, we are DBS checked, but obviously many schools... Um, have the requirement that, that you should be chaperoned and that is what happens uh, at all the videos that we've, we've done. Um, we're happy to move around the site for the interviews. I'd recommend no more than three or four movements in a day because otherwise you just lose too much time to packing all the cameras and equipment down, moving across the site, basically rebuilding it all, setting up another shot. But you want that variety. You don't just want one room for the whole day. Um, but I'd say certainly three or four would be your upper limit. Um, and as I say, because we twin track it with two or three people, we're getting multiple things done at the same time very efficiently. So it minimizes that disruption on your school. Also, in terms of getting it turned around quickly, there's a really clear timeline. So it starts with an initial meeting. A lot of these have been conducted over zone, Zoom. A lot of these have been conducted over Zoom or the phone recently. Um, we talk about the school, what you want to convey, we look at budgets um, and we look at scheduling so that we can actually get things moving quickly. Um, that's, the, that's the initial stage and that's the really important planning stage. Again, just to give you an idea, we've, we've had a planning meeting on a Monday and we've been in the school filming on the Thursday, so it can move quickly. It can move as quickly as you can get your schedule booked in um, and we'll work with you, give you telephone support um, to get you to the point where um, you've got a workable schedule that, that's realistic. And again, we're always, we will feed back if, if, it, if it doesn't work or you're trying to be maybe too ambitious or maybe you're just not making the most of the day um, and we feel you could get more out of it in terms of the filming that gives you options for edits in the, in the future. Then on the day of the filming, we do cutaway shots and interviews. So again, this is normally two or three people, one person for the cutaway shots, and normally two people uh, for the interviews because of all the extra equipment that, that that entails. Then typically on a Saturday, we'll come back and we'll get your aerial footage. So we prefer the site to be clear or as clear as possible um, for health and safety reasons. Um, and we'll, we'll generally come back on a nice sort of sunny day. And uh, again, we'll be chaperoned around the site and get those aerial shots that really do sell your school. And if you've got a school with uh, playing fields and you know quite an expansive site having that aerial vantage point of your school really really does give it the wow factor for the promotional video and then finally once all of those bits are complete we move into post-production and again this can be happening between the interviews and the cutaway shots uh, filming day and the aerial footage so you know we might film with you on a Tuesday and on the Wednesday Thursday Friday we're editing the video then we go in do the aerial footage and then on the Monday um, we're putting that into the video and then sending you a version over to review, you suggest changes, we amend the video um, and take it through until you're happy with the finished product. Typically, uh, we, we have one round of amends on videos and then people are generally really happy with, with what they've got because by meeting you and understanding your school, we, we have a better idea of, of what makes the school tick 
Um, and there's a number of, number of different ways that we can approach the post-production to sort of uh, speed things up for you. So as I said, you can go from an inquiry to a delivered video within 10 working days, which is pretty quick. Um, we'll give you the filming schedule that you can populate, uh, leave you to, to book in all the appointments, the interviews, and arrange all the necessary sort of classroom shots, PE lessons, music, extracurricular activities that you want us to film throughout the day. Um, the thing to note with the cutaways is often we can get things done a lot quicker than say an interview. So 15 to 20 minutes per classroom is often more than enough to, to give us the footage that we, that we need, unless there's something particularly um, sort of important happening, like maybe a science experiment when, when maybe a little bit more time is advantageous. But we can, we can talk you through that um, at, at the point where we're doing the planning. And then we work with, uh, with you as co-producers of the video, giving you guidance, answering any questions, um, and really teasing out what makes your school unique. So live streaming, um, you might want to consider doing this. I certainly think it's a really good way to uh, kind of replicate um, your open day. You know, it is live. Um, but what equipment are you going to need to, to do that? So um, you need a platform that supports live video, Facebook, YouTube. You can go live from your phone if you want to. Um, I would highly recommend uh, a switch a streaming device such as the Atom Mini, which I've got here. And I use that to cut between the cameras uh, over Zoom, which can work really well as a webinar platform. Um, or if you're happy and you can mute everyone, you can, depending on the license, you can sort of go up to 100 people or so on here. Um, and that can be quite an effective way. Again, it, it can be password protected, so it controls who gets to see uh, the content if, if that's important to you, or you want to capture data, perhaps. A microphone, really important. Um, there's lots of really good USB microphones. If you are gonna do something fairly sort of straightforward and simple involving Zoom, maybe just a computer and a, and a camera. Um, I'd certainly recommend a USB mic that plugs into the computer or a lapel microphone, um, like I showed you earlier that I'm wearing just here in the middle of my chest. So that's really uh, effective way of picking up the audio. Again, you want a computer to control the stream or the, the platform that you're using, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, Zoom, whatever you're going through. Um, something with fairly high spec is recommended. An old laptop, 10 years old, that you found sitting in the corner with dust on probably won't be up to the job. So uh, we always bring iMacs to do our live streaming jobs um, and we keep them clear of, of everything. There's no antivirus software running in the background or anything like that slowing it down. It's just the program running, allowing it to put all of its um, resources into, into running that for you so you don't get any slowdown or, or any issues. And again, I'd, I'd recommend you do the same. Uh, lighting, obviously really important. I'm lit today by two LED ring lights and that makes a really big difference. So I'd recommend that you, you do the same. If you want to embed your live broadcast from YouTube into your website, you'll need a thousand plus subscribers to enable the feature. So just be aware of that. You can embed the video into your uh, website without that many subscribers, but the viewer will have to click on the video and then be taken through to YouTube um, to, to watch it, but just to make you aware of that. So another option is live streaming pre-recorded content. So you may want to consider that. My top tips for that are keep it punchy, keep it concise. Um, you need to hold an online viewer sort of more than you would someone on the open day. Um, it's, a, it's a different kind of presentation, essentially. You should make viewers aware that some or all of the content has been pre-recorded. And when you're considering when you're going to run the, uh, the stream, think carefully about good times to do that. Try not to clash with things like dinner time, um, you know, picking up up from school, uh, you know, other things that are going on, big football matches, anything like that, that just check the schedules for the, the day you're looking to do it. Because um, if you're competing with something else, you, you may lose out to that. But again, that's where pre-recorded content can be really useful because people can consume that at, at sort of any time. Um, and with many of the live videos, they can watch them back afterwards on social media. So, um, but just give that some consideration. Obviously, platforms you can range um, stream rather to a range of different platforms. 
uh, Vimeo, YouTube, uh, or Zoom like I'm, I'm using to uh, do this today and to record this. This is really important, whether we do it for you um, or you do it yourself, your internet connection. So make sure you've tested this and it works. Many schools will have a block um, and, and you, know, you may not be able to stream out, so you may need to get permission from the county or your IT provider uh, to actually do that. So again, always happy to come and, and look at that, uh, run a test as part of, of the budget that we've got in place um, to make sure that everything does what we want it to. We can do a speed test, we can run a live stream out over a period of 30 minutes just to see if there's anything that's gonna lock us out um, or block it because we, we have had that over the years. And again, it's better to test it and to know um, than to find that out on the day. If you do do it yourself, um, you might want to consider hiring some cameras, microphones, lights, um, for either the pre-recorded content or anything if you're going to go live. Um, shameless plug, we, we hire equipment. So if you're in our locality and you want to do streaming or you want to record content, but you don't necessarily have the best equipment to do it, then we have stuff available um, that you can hire and we can also teach you uh, do a training session on how to use it as well so we can we can always factor that in too so if you're going to mix your pre-recorded and your live content I've got a couple of top tips to help you keep it short and sweet uh, I'd recommend less than 30 minutes have a mixture of content that's live and uh, pre-recorded so you can jump back and forth so from here you know live camera back to pre-recorded videos like I've been running today, I'd certainly recommend, um, recommend doing that. Um, uh, try and find a controlled environment um, where you're not gonna have too many noises and distractions and also where you can plug your computer in via an ethernet cable. And remember people will judge your school by the quality of your production. So make sure that you put your best foot forward. Um, in summary, consider your options in terms of content, choose what feels right for your school or college and also crucially what fits with your budget. People will inevitably make an opinion on the school or college based on your production value so it is worth doing this to a, to a high standard. If you're going to use live streaming, check and test the internet connection well ahead of time. And you may want to consider hiring some equipment if you're thinking of doing filming and live streaming in-house. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed, you've enjoyed the talk. I hope you've enjoyed the talk. For more information or to discuss your requirements in terms of production, hire or training, uh, please contact us. We've got all of the contact details here. And uh, thank you very much for watching my presentation today.